Hi students. Today we are going to learn about the statistics of paramagnetism using canonical ensemble formulation. Before going into the statistics of paramagnetism using our canonical ensemble theory, we discuss briefly what is meant by the paramagnetic nature of materials. Here we consider n magnetic dipoles in a paramagnetic material having dipole moment mu. In the presence of a magnetic field H, they will experience a torque will, which will align them in the direction of the field resulting in complete magnetization. But in reality what happens is that the thermal agitation offers resistance to this alignment resulting in partial magnetization. At T equal to 0 Kelvin, there is no thermal agitation resulting in the complete magnetization of the material. At T equal to infinity, that is when the temperature becomes infinitely high, thermal agitation will be maximum. All the dipoles will be randomly oriented resulting in poor magnetization. Thus for temperatures between 0 Kelvin to infinity, the ratio of mu H by Kt, that is the ratio of magnetic field to the temperature, decides the strength of magnetization of a paramagnetic material is the ratio of the strength of the magnetic field to the apply, uh, applied magnetic field to the temperature that decides the strength of the magnetization in a paramagnetic material. So here what we are going to do is that in the statistics of paramagnetism in the study of the statistics of paramagnetism using canonical and simple formulation we consider a system of dipoles and find out the partition function of the system. Using the partition function, we determine the magnetization of this system. And from the uh, value of the magnetization, the state of the magnetization of the system under different conditions like low field and high temperature, high field and low temperature, etc. can be accurately found out. So first, what we do here is how do we apply the canonical ensemble theory to study the statistics of paramagnetic materials or to study the statistics of paramagnetism is we consider a system of n dipoles having dipole moment mu when placed in a magnetic field H. We calculate the partition function of the system of dipoles that is Q n beta that is a function of temperature is equal to we find out the partition function of the system how uh, for the system of n dipoles I find out the part single dipole partition function that is Q 1 beta and raise it to the power of capital N so that I get Q n beta that is the partition function of the system just as we have done in the case of a harmonic oscillator. So, my work here is to calculate the partition function of a single dipole that is Q1. Q1 is equal to sigma e raised to minus beta e or where e is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n I sum over the energies of all the dipoles epsilon i that is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to capital N minus mu dot h where mu dot h is the potential energy of a system of dipoles having dipole moment mu when placed in a magnetic field h so that e is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n mu h cos theta so that my q1 beta is equal to summation over theta e raised to minus beta into minus mu h cos theta that is equal to sigma theta e raised to beta mu h cos theta. Next we will check how the partition function and the magnetization are related or how the partition function and the mean magnetic moment of the system in the direction of the field are related. Uh, I have told you to study the statistics of paramagnetism. We, we must be able to calculate the magnetization of a paramagnetic material and using canonical ensemble formulation how do you calculate this magnetization? We find out the partition function of the system and 
from that you must be able to uh, derive a relation so that you can find out capital m that is the magnetization from q that is the partition function now i am going to determine that relation here now uh, the average or the mean magnetic moment uh, in the direction of the field that is mz is given as mz is equal to which in turn gives you the degree of magnetization mz is equal to n into the average value of mu cos theta or expectation value of mu cos theta that is equal to n into sigma mu cos theta e raised to minus beta e by uh, sigma e raised to minus beta e how did all those terms come we know in canonical and simple formulation to find the expectation value of any physical quantity f what do we do we find out f into the probability that is here the probability is given as e raised to minus beta e by sigma e raised to minus beta e so i found out the expectation value of mu cos theta so mz is equal to n into sigma mu cos theta e raised to beta mu h cos theta by sigma e raised to beta mu h cos theta i substituted for e next i directly write down from this equation the relationship between the degree of magnetization and the partition function q as mz is equal to n by beta do by do h of log q1 beta now are these two equations the same for that i have shown the derivative of do uh, do by do h of log q1 or the differentiation of the logarithm of the partition function with respect to h that is do by do h of log q1 is equal to you get it exactly the same as all these terms together with an additional beta there so what i do to get the magnetization i just divide by beta this derivative do by do h of log of the partition function divided by beta will give me my magnetization i think it's clear to you that is how these two equations are related so now i found out that from the partition function i'll be able to calculate the magnetization of the system so this is how we are going to study the statistics of paramagnetism here again like the harmonic oscillator we can follow two approaches one is the classical approach and the other one is the quantum mechanical approach for the study of uh, the statistics of paramagnetism in the classical treatment what we do is we consider our uh, dipoles to be Mm, classical dipoles that can be oriented in any direction with respect to the applied magnetic field h which implies the magnetic dipole moment mu and its component mu z in the direction of the field can take any arbitrary values whereas this is not possible in the quantum mechanical treatment which we'll discuss further when we consider that treatment okay so in the classical treatment mu and mu z can take any arbitrary values so here what i do is we consider n dipoles aligned within an elemental solid angle because they can take any orientation so that my q1 beta is equal to i am going to integrate integral 0 to 2 pi integral 0 to pi e raised to beta mu h cos theta sin theta d theta d phi that is equal to when i integrate for d phi i get it as 2 pi into integral 0 to pi e raised to beta mu h cos theta sin theta d theta next what we do is simple mathematics i substitute for cos theta as x x and uh, my dx becomes minus sin theta d theta i change the limits at the when theta equal to 0 x equal to 1 theta equal to pi x equal to minus 1 so that my q1 beta is equal to integral plus 1 to minus of integral plus 1 to minus 1 e raised to beta mu h x dx into 2 pi i change interchange the limits that is i change it as the limit from 
minus 1 to plus 1 so that I multiply with 1 more minus 1 so that my entire partition function becomes a positive value uh, positive e raised to minus 1 to plus 1 e raised to beta mu hx dx into 2 pi this is simply the form e raised to x dx so that my q1 beta becomes equal to 2 pi into e raised to beta mu hx divided by beta mu h within the limits minus 1 to plus 1 now uh, I apply the limits multiply by uh, and divide the numerator and denominator by 2 so that I get my answer in the form of a sin h function that is q1 beta is equal to 4 pi by beta mu h into sin h beta mu h sin h of uh, a x is equal to e raised to a x minus e raised to minus a x by 2 so I have used it here and I have written the uh, partition function for the single dipole now the average magnetic moment in the direction of the field h is given as mu z bar is equal to mu cos theta. The average magnetic moment in the direction of the field is mu z bar is equal to the expectation value of mu cos theta which is equal to uh, the mz by n. The mz that we have already uh, calculated in terms of the partition function. So that my mu z bar is equal to 1 by beta into dou by dou h log q1 beta. Now I just find out what is mu z bar. So 1 by beta into for the partition function equation that I have calculated. 1 by beta dou by dou h of log. I have written the q1 beta here. Now what I do is log a by b. I am going to write it as log a minus log b. So 1 by beta dou by dou h of log a minus log b. I differentiate the first logarithm. I differentiate the second logarithm with respect to h and I get the answer like this. You can go through. So that mu z bar is equal to mu cos h beta mu h minus 1 by beta h or mu z bar is equal to I take mu common factor out mu into cos uh, it is not cos it is cot h uh, beta mu h minus 1 by beta mu h so this term inside the bracket has the form of a special function called Langevin function given by lx cot hx minus 1 by x see it has exactly the same form as it is cot h beta mu h minus 1 by beta mu h whereas the special function has the form cot h x minus 1 by x where x is equal to beta mu h. So I can replace now this is the graph between uh, x and lx. So my our mu z bar can be replaced as mu into the Langevin function beta mu h of beta mu h where beta mu h is mu h by kt that is the ratio of the applied field to the temperature. If N0 is the number of dipoles per uh, unit volume then magnetization yes you already know magnetization is the uh, ratio of the dipole moment to the uh, per unit volume. So mz0 uh, is equal to N0 into mu z bar or mz, mz0 is equal to N0 into mu z bar is mu into L mu b beta h. So I have got the expression for the magnetization of the material as a function of beta and h or mu h by kt. I have got this is how we began for in the case of paramagnetic materials for temperatures between 0 to infinity the um, strength of the magnetization of the material is decided by the ratio uh, mu h by kt. So we have got that the strength of the magnetization that is mz0 is equal to n0 um, mu into the Langevin function of mu beta h that is it is a function of mu h by kt beta means 1 by kt now I consider the two different cases that is height when the temperature is very much high and the field is very weak how will the parameter how what will be the nature of a paramagnetic material in terms of its magnetization when a paramagnetic material is subjected to a high temperature and weak magnetic field we know x is equal to beta mu h that is mu h by kt when t is large and h is small it, this term becomes much much less than 1 so that lx is equal to cot hx minus 1 by x is equal to x by 
3 minus 6 cube by 45 all these these are the expansions of this function which is I just take the first term because x is very much small so this lx is approximately equal to x by 3 now I substitute it in the equation for mz0 so that n0 mu uh, into mu beta h by 3 because x is mu beta h by 3 so n0 mu square beta h by 3 so, mz0 is equal to n0 mu square beta h by 3. Now, I write down the susceptibility of the system. What is susceptibility? It gives the degree of magnetization of the material in response to a magnetic field or chi, chi is equal to dou mz0 by dou h. That is the degree of magnetization of the material. How does it change with the applied magnetic field? I find out the derivative. I get chi is equal to n0 mu square by kt. Here n0 mu square by 3k are all constants. So, chi is equal to a constant into 1 by T or chi is equal to uh, constant I represent as C by T where C is equal to n0 mu square by k and this is called Curie's law that is when the temperature is very high and the field is weak the susceptibility of the material that is the degree of magnetization of the material with respect to the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the temperature as temperature increases the degree of magnetization with respect to the field will go on decreasing in the paramagnetic material next we consider the second case that is low temperature and high field mu beta h is equal to mu h by kt which is a very large value because h is large and t is small in such cases l x is equal to 1 when x becomes extremely large so mz0 becomes n0 into mu that is the magnetization becomes maximum when the magnetic field is high and temperature is low or the system is in a state of magnetic saturation so, what we have learned here is that uh, the statistics of paramagnetism uh, with respect to a classical approach using canonical ensemble formulation that is we found out the partition function of the system from that we found out the magnetization of the system and the magnetization uh, is calculated when the field is high and uh, the temperature is low and when the uh, field is low and the temperature is high and we have studied how the magnetization of the system varies under these two conditions that is we have uh, found out the complete nature of a paramagnetic material using uh, canonical ensemble formulation or by simply calculating its partition function and here the explanation is given on the basis of a classical treatment the same explanation can also be given in terms of a quantum mechanical treatment and that we will deal in the next class thank you